This is video number six in our series, Creating Dailies in DaVinci Resolve for Avid Media Composer. In step six, we'll be importing and organizing audio files into Avid Media Composer. So I have a project here that I've created that has my video files for my project. I've got three video cards with a bunch of footage. This is all video footage. It doesn't have any audio attached to it because they recorded double system and the audio is coming in as separate files. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna import the audio from the production drive that was given to me by the producers and I'm gonna organize those files in a way that will be useful down the line when I'm working with these files. So I'm gonna create a new bin and I'm gonna call it day one audio. And that's the bin that I'm gonna to use to import all of my audio files. So I received a drive from the production that had all of the video and audio files on it. And as you can see here, there's audio under each day. So we're just gonna do day one for the purposes of this exercise. Inside this audio folder, they've got a subfolder that actually has the year and the day, the month and the day. And inside of that, you can see all of the different audio files that they recorded on set. And actually, in this case, you can tell that the audio recorders was super organized because they actually subdivided all of their files and they have little sound reports for each of the scenes that they did, so which is really, really awesome. Um, they're super organized. So this, I feel really lucky that <laughs> I had a good sound recordist that did all of this because it doesn't always look that good. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm just gonna bring everything all into one big bin um, because I can see that they're pretty well labeled. So I'm just gonna drag and drop them in groups into the bin. It asks me what the start time of the audio is going to be and how we want it to be imported. And that's because the software application can look at audio files and can assign a variety of different frame rates to those audio files. The frame rate isn't actually built into the metadata of the audio file, you need to tell it. So I know in this case that they shot 2398 as a frame rate, all my video is that frame rate and the audio is going to be that frame rate as well. So I'm going to tell it yes, it's 2398. So then it will tell me, okay, we're going to use that time base for all of these audio files. And I just say, okay to all. And then it will import and create MXF files for all of my audio files. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to do that for all of the audio that they recorded on that day. Okay, so I've now imported all of my audio into Avid Media Composer from the drive that was given to me by the production. And I'm just going to have a look at what kind of metadata we have here. So it's giving me all the file names. Uh, tape name has come in automatically because the sound recordist used a good uh, system that has metadata in it and they clearly recorded the proper date for all of these files. Um, there's no cam roll, but we don't use that because it's a sound roll. We can see the drive that the media is now living on, how many tracks, sometimes there's four, sometimes there's six, probably depends on how many actors are in the scene. We can also see if we move over to some of these empty columns that I've got columns for sound TC, sound roll, and sound file name. One of the reasons that it's important to record this information is that although this information does appear in some other columns, like we can see the name is here in the name column, what's gonna happen is once we start syncing our audio and our video files together, the system is gonna start combining some of the metadata from the video files and the audio files into these columns. So for example, my video files have one name, my audio files have another name. When I start syncing these files together, what's gonna go in the name column? Well, typically what Avid does is it will put the video file name in the name column. What happens to the name of the sound file? Where does it live? So the best thing to do is to copy that into a different column so that we can always have access to it. So I'm gonna take everything in the name column, all of these sound file names, I'm gonna click on the entire column by clicking the column header. I'm gonna click Command D or Control D and I'm gonna say we're gonna copy everything into the column that's called sound file name. So I'm just gonna scroll down, find that. Now this information from the name column is also populated in our sound file name column. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the information that's in the tape column and I'm gonna move that into the sound roll column. Okay, so now the sound roll column contains all the same information as the tape column. And again, that's because when I sync this audio with some video, the videotape information is gonna be what populates the tape column of those new clips. And then the sound information isn't gonna be quite as easy to find. So I like to put it in a new column. The last column that's really, really important is the sound TC column. And this is once again, because Although the sound timecode appears in the start 
column, what's going to happen is when I sync this with the video, the start time code column is going to reflect the video time code, not the audio time code. Now, ideally, on a professional shoot, these time codes are going to be pretty much the same because they would have recorded a system that match the time code with the camera and the audio recordist, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it changes or sometimes it's off by a few frames. So the sound TC and the video TC need to be stored separately. So I'm going to copy all of the start time code information from these sound files into the sound TC column. So now we have a really good amount of metadata. We have our sound time code, our sound roll, which is like our tape information or our real information for our sound. We have our sound file name. And because we have these in their own unique columns, it's going to ensure that when we sync up the audio and the video files, that we're not going to lose any metadata information. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to use Avid syncing tools to take all of the audio and video that they filmed on this production for this day and sync it together using timecode.